Ibrahimovic, Cristiano Ronaldo and Michu. What do they have in common? Well, they were Haaland's three favorite players growing up. The thing is, Ibra won 31 trophies, scored 600 goals and is Sweden's all-time top scorer. Ronaldo, well, is football's all-time top scorer, while Michu won one single top-flight trophy over his entire career, scored just 100 goals and played only 12 minutes of Champions League football. So, why him? Haaland loved the other two, but Michu was special for him. He constantly tweeted about him, he's mentioned him in a bunch of interviews, he does his trademark celebration all the time, and he even used to tag Michu in every single one of his Instagram posts trying to get his attention. And I just have to say this, it worked. Long before Haaland became the player he is today, Michu noticed some random kid constantly tagging him and the two have apparently kept in touch for years without ever meeting, though it seems that could happen soon. If you think about it, it makes sense, they're both really tall, left-footed with an eye for goal and a really awkward way of running. But above all, at Michu's peak, Haaland was just, well, falling in love with football and Michu was something so special back then. Like I once read on a YouTube comment section, did he really exist or was it just a wonderful dream? Michu's prime was so perfect yet so momentary, it's almost like he only existed for those 12 months, but in fact, his story started much earlier. Michu grew up as a huge Real Video fan. In fact, his entire family loved the club and both him and his brother played at their academy. They were pretty big back then and when Michu was 14, they even built a new stadium, 30,000 seats in. He dreamed of one day stepping foot on that pitch for the first time, going up against Barcelona or Real, continuing the club's quest for the top of Spanish football. But then, after 13 consecutive seasons in La Liga, a surprising relegation and ruined it all for them. Struggling to pay off their stadium, they couldn't get the funds for new players and instead of bouncing back, they doubled down on their poor form and found themselves in the third tier. Then, not even able to pay the players' wages, they were sent to the fourth division in the blink of an eye. Hope was long gone. The club who had brought us Santi Cazorl and Juan Mata was now seemingly over. And so was Michu's dream. In fact, that was the exact year he got his debut. Instead of a demonstration of how far they had come, those 30,000 seats were now only a reminder of what they had once been. Still, Michu showed some promise right from the start and the club even went up one tier in his first season. But after two years there, they dropped back to the fourth tier and Michu felt powerless and being already 22 years old, he worried about becoming just another forgotten talent, so he took on a move to Salta de Vigo in the second tier. Regardless, don't think he abandoned Real Video. it would eventually be him and the other ex-players who would fire up the fans donating all they could to save the club that is slowly now getting back to the good old times just narrowly missing out on the promotion playoffs to La Liga last season. Nevertheless, at Celta de Vigo, Michu found himself at another club in need of redemption. Just four years before he arrived, they were defeating AC Milan in the Champions League, but somehow, that same year, they got relegated. Yet they came right back up and immediately qualified for the UEFA Cup, beating Spartak, Fenerbahce, Standard Liège, you name it. But once again, somehow, they got relegated that same year, which was followed by the arrival of Michu, of course. It's almost like he was attracted to the drama, the extreme emotions, which, strangely enough, would go on to define his career. The 22-year-old would be kept in Celta's B team for a while, but would impress so much with his goal-scoring exploits that soon he would be joining the likes of Diego Costa in their main team, and from there on out, time seemed to fly by. The next year he started his impressive partnership with Iago Aspas, by the third he began impressing like never before and even got a major chance to join Sporting Gijón in La Liga, shockingly refusing it as they were rivals of his childhood club Real Video, which he would get constantly teased for, leading to his iconic I don't hear you now celebration which came in handy the following season as he took Celta to the promotion playoffs, sadly being the one to miss the decisive penalty. However, he was in the eyes of many the reason Celta had gone so far and that earned him his first ever move to the top flight of Spanish football, joining Rayo Vallecano as a free transfer meeting Diego Costa once again. To the surprise of no one, Rayo were also going through some dramatic events. Known as the Giant Killers, in 2001 they shocked Spain by making it to the UEFA Cup quarterfinals, only to then get relegated twice and end up in the third division, only making it back to La Liga eight years later, of course, 
course, the exact year that Michu showed up. But this time around, it was much more helpful in their redemption plot, being deployed on the left side of their midfield and going on to have the season of his life scoring two goals against Real, the first of which, just 15 seconds into the match, the fastest anyone had ever managed to score at the Bernabeu. Totaling out 15 league goals by the end of the season, making him the highest scoring midfielder in La Liga and attracting the attention of one of the league's all-time greats, Mikael Laudrup. 17 years since his last match for Real Madrid, Laudrup had just taken over Swansea, who had just become the first Welsh team to make it into the Premier League since its foundation. Making lots of fancy signings that initially overshadowed the measly £2 million he had to pay for some 27-year-old from Rayo Vallecano. In a way, this is why it has been said for so many years that Michu showed up out of nowhere. But trust me, Laudrup knew Spain, he clearly had an eye for talent, and he knew damn well the kind of player he was about to introduce to the Premier League. It was the club's 100-year anniversary, and as they debuted their celebratory gold and white kit, it quickly became clear that Michu was the man with the golden touch. As he traveled in the team's bus to his debut away at Loftus Road, Angel Rangel warned him he should get ready for a tough match, that it was hard to win any away game in the Premier League. Then eight minutes into the game, Michu strolled to the sideline celebrating his first goal. Then came another and two assists for good measure, Michu was the star and Swansea had won 5-0. But what endeared the fans to him was his humility and childish exuberance. He was such a normal, easy-going guy. His father took a commercial flight and train every weekend from Spain so he could come watch him. He never stopped taking his siesta and he wasn't even afraid to admit that every time he got home from a match, he hit some favada. And regardless of that, by the time Christmas came around, he was the Premier League's top scorer, from Suarez to Bale and Van Persie, who had costed Man United the equivalent of 15 Michus. No one could get on his level, even though he was not even really a striker. He moved between a secondary role up front to playing as a number 10 or even on the left side of the pitch. It was unbelievable. One year after getting his first tier debut in Spain, this 27-year-old was the most talked about player in the Premier League, and as Sir Alex would go on to say, it was a first-class piece of business, just two million pounds, and I'd never even heard of him. From headers to finesse shots from outside the box, he had everything plus a liking for big teams. Scoring against Liverpool, Man United, Tottenham, netting three against Arsenal, and even once his form had died down a bit, he scored the curler versus Chelsea in the League Cup semi-final, getting Swansea the best possible gift for their 100th year anniversary, their first ever appearance in a cup final. In the eyes of their fans, Michu was an angel sent down from heaven. However, in one of the greatest underdog final matchups of all time, Michu became a grave digger, scoring to put Bradford City down and take the trophy after they had beaten Arsenal and Aston Villa despite playing in the fourth tier of English football. This is still to this day Swansea's only ever major trophy, and it was a trophy that earned them their only ever chance to play at the Europa League. Michu, on the other hand, well, he got a new contract, never-ending compliments from Laudrup, and a million different calls from many of Europe's top clubs, including 30 million from Arsenal, though Swansea would reject all of them. However, a call they couldn't stop him from picking up was his first ever call-up to the Spanish national team. Just months earlier, Michu had been asked about the possibility, and he replied, impossible, they're the best team in the world. Well, I guess that means now, he was one of the best in the world as well. And to celebrate once his debut was over, he went for McDonald's, because that's just how he was. Once the next season started, for a second people almost believed this was all real and not just some distant dream. Ten matches, five goals and two assists by the end of September were enough for that. The world was convinced he was the impossible late bloomer when finally he missed the match through injury, came back and didn't look right. Seven matches, only one goal, then the injury finally put him down for good. He was out for one month with problems with his knee. Came back and two matches later, another hit. This time it was his ankle. He was off for three months. By the time the season ended, it had been seven months since it all started. He had only played 11 matches, not managing to score a single goal and only getting one assist. 
Over that period, his injury stopped him from joining Spain for a second time and ruined his chances of being called up for the World Cup. All whilst once his results took a dive and Laudrup was sacked following a corruption scandal where agents were paying him off to convince the board to sign certain players. In a desperate attempt to get it all back on track, Swansea sent a depressed Michu out on loan to Napoli, but nothing. After six matches, the fans had little reason to even remember his name, and then a minor knock put him out and after a few exams it all became clear. It had been exactly one year since Michu had his first ankle injury, but if he was already in no mood to celebrate, it all became worse when he was told the following day that he had been diagnosed with periostitis, permanent inflammation of the tissue around his ankle. He now knew for sure the pain that had stopped him from performing for the last year wouldn't go away and he never played for Napoli again. After four surgeries, he agreed to terminate his contract at Swansea. He received thousands of letters, fans, saying goodbye. Despite playing just 67 matches for the club, Michu had changed them forever. At that point, it had been 441 days since his last match. The doctors told him it was a normal injury that many players get. A few tablets and pills a day would keep the pain away. It would be fine. But no matter how closely Michu followed their orders, the pain never went away. He could never give them his best. When he told his family he couldn't do it anymore, so he was going to join the team his brother was coaching in the third division, they thought he was crazy. This messed with his head. Everyone around him seemed to think he was faking it, that the pain wasn't real because the doctors insisted the injury was not so bad. In fact, the clubs believed this and with the hype around his name being the way it was, they were willing to bet on it. Aston Villa insisted repeatedly that he should sign for them, give it one last go. It was a multi-million dollar offer, but Michu turned it down every single time. He said, as a person, you have to be honorable and honest. I knew I couldn't give them my best and if I could, it would have been for Swansea, not Villa. In the end, just one year after he had joined Napoli, Michu did join Union Langreo, where he was coached by his own brother and he was still impressive. 12 goals in 17 matches, all while he was barely even able to run a couple of laps around the pitch during warm-up. And still, even his wife doubted him. He felt completely alone. At least Real Ovideo came back for their boy, offering him a chance to have his victory lap, finally playing for his childhood team, once again battling for promotion to La Liga in the stadium of his dreams. It had all come full circle. In the end, it was not so bad. Even though after only one season there, the pain forced him to retire at the age of only 31. However, when interviewed years later, it all got even darker. Michu claimed he had the ankle of an 8-year-old, that even walking down the street was too painful to handle for the man who had seduced the Premier League levitating down the pitch. They asked him about Swansea, and he said it all felt like trying to remember a dream after waking up. And well, it certainly was dreamlike for all of us.